as it turns out, a lot of those refugees are going to be getting uh, three hots and a cot. I'll tell you why in just a moment. It's about percentages and how many, how many Muslims are in prisons, both in America and in Europe. But in the meantime, I do want to make a quick mention. We're going to be talking with Kelton Hatch in just a few days from Idaho Fish and Game, and that means we'll be talking about hunting seasons. We also want to tell you about high desert meat processing in Twin Falls, where they process one animal at a time. What you bring in is what you get back. Darren Van Horn, owner of High Desert Meat Processing in Twin Falls, has over 30 years of experience in the meat business. You can visit High Desert Meat Processing on Facebook, and you'll see some of the reviews there from customers. Great reviews. Give High Desert Meat Processing a call for all of your wild game and domestic needs. 734-9949. And in fact, I'll give out that number again in just a moment. High Desert Meat does in-house smoking. Nothing gets shipped out. Specialty meats such as jerky pepperoni. Summer sausage, salami, breakfast sausage, kielbasa, brats, Polish dogs, hot dogs, much more. USDA approved. Darren works closely with local beef growers and their programs to ensure quality meat. The telephone number is 734-9949. So, Middle East Watch, which is uh, one of those publications that I subscribe to, get daily emails from this publication. Uh, this is uh, this is out of uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And it's actually, uh, the, the fellow in charge of it is, uh, you may read him, uh, in the Washington Times as well. His name is Daniel Pipes. He's also a regular on uh, on a lot of television programs, uh, cable news programs that you will see. This comes from his website, a writer by the name of Johanna Markind writing, The current issue of The New Yorker reports that according to the Paris-based Iranian sociologist Farhad Kasrokabar, of France's 64,000 prisoners, up to 60% are Muslim. Get that? In France, 60% of the prison population is Muslim. Although, Muslims are thought to compose only 8% of France's total population. Based on data from 2011, Pew Research Center estimated that Muslims made up 9% of the state and federal prisoners in the United States. So, it's a lower percentage here. But, Pew also reported that as of 2010, Less than 1% of the U.S. population was Muslim, although that was up from just a little over half of 1% 25 years ago. You get that? Prison populations overwhelmingly Muslim in Europe and in the United States. Is there a problem with these people? How shall we put it? Do they meld? I mean, are they able to somehow adopt the native culture, or do they somehow take a different course? And if they do, how are we going to deal with that? Because housing someone inside a prison is likely more expensive than housing them on the outside of the prison. 937, Bill Cowley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 59. You can reach our program by dialing us at 736 300 You will not see that in a great many publications. Oddly, the New Yorker picked it up, but it's just a blip on a map. You will not hear that on CNN or over at MSDNC. The New York Times will not report it. Pravda on the Potomac will not report it. And uh, your own rag right here in the Magic Valley will not report those numbers. You're up next, and you're on the air on Top Story with Bill Colley. Good morning, Bill. Yeah, I was listening to uh, Representative Mike McCall out of uh, Texas. He is the chairman of the House uh, uh, Homeland Security Committee. And he said unequivocally this morning that they do not have a human intelligence on the ground in the Middle East of that any refugee coming into this country, and that he fears that it may become a pipeline for uh, jihadists to come through. I was looking at photographs of all these refugees leaving Syria on the train and it's suspicious to see that there is no women, no children, no elderly, no infirm. It's all males of military age. I saw a post this morning, which is related to this, maybe on the periphery, but it was at Pocatello Tea Party's Facebook page. And the writer said that in the United States, we saw a loss of three quarters of a million jobs last month. Now, why are we going to be bringing in tens of thousands of more people if that's the case? Because it just seems to me that we've reached a breaking point here. How much more of this can we actually take? 
well, how many of our veterans are out there out of out of uh, work that could use the jobs? And we're going to bring people in to take their the jobs from them. And drive wages down and further depress uh, the economy and more and more Absolutely. people will be unable to pay mortgages. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah, great. Wonderful, wonderful administration we have with us right now. <laughs> hey, thank you. He was being facetious, by the way. 939, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Yes, it's the Obama White House, and it's the lingering effects of Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State when she decided to get rid of our ally, Muammar Gaddafi. He'd been our ally since 2003. But it's also Republicans like John McCain who went over and traveled to Syria when we should have been backing Assad against these people. McCain went over there and whipped up the frenzy among the people who eventually became known as ISIS. And it's people on our own local level. McCall, who he mentioned, the caller mentioned from Texas. Great guy. But you don't hear that from, uh, from our own member of the House of Representatives. And our two U.S. senators, they'll nod and smile and go, oh, I hear you, I hear you. Say you don't have any campaign cash, do you? Well, tell you what, i got to run. Somebody's got to start holding their feet to the fire, folks. The future is at stake. Bill Colley with you this morning, 940 and 59. A week from yesterday, so it's a, coming up next Monday, we're going to have a guest in studio with us, which we're looking forward to. She has been uh, very gracious and is a new advertiser on our program, Dr. Christine Pickup, Doctor of Audiology at Mott Harrison Audiology, 1218 9th Street, that's uh, Unit 2 in Rupert. And uh, you can reach them at 208-312-0957 or the website, mottharrisonaudiology.com. Did you know that the health of the inner ear is affected by your cardiovascular and kidney health? The inner ear is very sensitive to changes in your blood supply. If you've had recent heart problems or even kidney problems, you should have your hearing checked right away. And the doctor will be joining us in studio. It's our first opportunity to meet meet with her. And uh, she is willing to help you out if you have some hearing issues. We'll talk more about that tomorrow as well. It's 944. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're up to 61. Looking for a high near 80 today. You know who is going to suffer? You know who really is going to suffer the most? If we end up taking, because Germany again is taking 800,000 refugees, the entire, the entire third world seems to be emptying out now and headed northward and westward. Pat Buchanan has been warning about this probably for 30 years. In books and in his newspaper column, and he's been called a racist, a bigot, Uh, old-fashioned, out of touch, out of step. But you know what? He predicted that this was going to happen, and now it's happening in massive ways. It is going to overwhelm governments in Europe and in the United States, because if Germany is taking close to one million of these people, Germany is now begging its neighbors to take them. And if Spain and Greece and Italy and Hungary and the other Balkan nations around Greece can't afford to do it, then Germany's going to come to the United States and say, well, thank you for bailing us out after World War II and paying all of our bills and feeding us and ignoring all the war debts from all over Europe. Now we want your hardworking taxpayers to bail us out once more. So maybe you could take a few million of them too. Where is it going to really impact people? Well, it's going to impact people, let's say, Black Americans who are really finding it difficult to find a job. I just read over the weekend, Donald Trump's current support among black Americans is at 25%. The closest anybody ever got in any past presidential election as a Republican in the last 50-some years was Bob Dole at 12% in 1996. Do you see a pattern developing here? Maybe we're not the only people, those grumpy old white people, maybe we're not the only people who are concerned about this any longer. You're on the air on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Good morning, Bill. I think what's horrible to me is the fact that we're getting all these Muslim refugees, but yet the Christian ones are being left behind. We got Glenn Beck trying to raise money to get them here uh, by buying them out. 
you know, here we are. We got the Muslims threatening them with deadlines that they don't leave. They're going to be killed. And the Muslim refugees are coming in, but yet our own government says, oh, well, we'll look into it next year. So the deadline will be gone, and they will be killed. So I, 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 this whole thing is just bizarre, and I think there's a deeper thing going on uh, that we don't see. Yeah, and I've been reading stories. About, thank you for the call. I've been reading stories about how uh, the Muslims are now going into these cities as they, especially ISIS, as it advances. But it's not the only group. There, there are a couple of other, uh, I won't say they're offshoots, but they're similar organizations. They go marching into a community, and what they do is they write the Arabic, the Arabic letter for N on the door of every Christian house. And that means that those Christians are going to be marked for either conversion or execution. If they, if they, and, and, you know, sometimes they can escape, but escape is difficult, obviously, because, you know, you don't know what the territory is or you can't take anything much to defend yourself. You know, you, you're basically fleeing with the clothes on your back. You're fleeing through areas that you're going to find a lot of other people who are incredibly hostile to you. You know, a few weeks ago in one of these refugee flotillas, by the time it actually arrived, I believe it was in Italy. What had happened was the Muslims had thrown all the Christians overboard. They drowned them. And yet, it's like, well, hey, why don't you come live next door to me? Well, and we'll have a grand old time. You can come over. I'll give you a ham sandwich and a glass of whiskey. Won't that be just great? Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and NewsRadio1310.com. We're coming up on 949, and in just a minute, Mike Gallagher will be along, and of course, the Gallagher Update is brought to you exclusively by the financial advisors at Waddell and Reed in Twin Falls, telephone number 736-6563. So we're talking about integrating people into not only Europe, but our culture and in our neighborhoods here, who in many cases don't even want to be integrated. They're coming here, we're told, because they want opportunity. Sure they do. But on the other hand, if, if that opportunity also means nudging you out of the way, and maybe sometimes forcefully, why can't people in the elite stratospheres or atmosphere, why can't they grasp this situation? They all believe that somehow I'll be okay. They'll like me because I agree to do all of this. Don't they realize that everybody will be in danger in these situations? And once again, you know, if I have somebody's background that I knew who they were, I don't have a problem with them coming here. But this situation now is so out of hand in that part of the world, we simply cannot know who these people are and what they mean. And I'm sorry, but if that means excluding all of them, then you've got to do it. Mike Gallagher is up next. Wrapping up today's edition of Top Story, Bill Colley with you. I want to thank Mike Gallagher, too, as well. You're listening to News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. I have one quick thing I wanted to share with you before we close the show today. And of course, we might be able to squeeze in another telephone call or two, 736-0300. Talking about all of these people who are supposedly coming to this country and think that, you know, the banquet is open for them. The fact of the matter is, we may not be able to deal with it. Well, from an economic standpoint, this might not be the best time to swing the doors open and say, come on in. This comes from the Washington Times. This was in the Times over the course of the Labor Day weekend. It's a labor issue, if you will. Work winds down in America, the author Terence Scanlon. He says it's the canary in the coal mine warning of disaster. The labor force participation rate is the Fed's estimate of the percentage of people aged 16 and over who are either working or looking for work. It is at the lowest it has been since the Jimmy Carter era. All of the gains made during the Reagan years and anything beyond have all been wiped out, all gone at this point, 35 years after Reagan uh, was first elected. The writer says, so the U3 measure of unemployment, that's the 5.1% uh, unemployment rate, creates the illusion that the economy is serving American workers roughly twice as well as it really is when you consider all the persons who've given up looking for jobs because they're no longer counted. They're off on the dole somewhere getting food stamps, 
and probably never will be able to work again in some cases because they've been gone from the workforce for so long. Today's labor force participation rate is 62.6%, a 38-year low. That depressed number wipes out all those gains made during the Reagan era, a time when women by the tens of millions moved into the workforce. And I cited this earlier in the program if you weren't with us. Today, he writes, more women are on food stamps than have full-time jobs. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? How did we get here? And now we want to start bringing in people from, we want to eliminate the southern border. Uh, Your local newspaper and their fellow travelers want to eliminate the southern border and just forget that it exists. And they want to bring people all from all over the world. And they're telling us, well, it's the right thing to do because life's really bad where they happen to be. It's going to get a lot worse here, too, if we keep this up. Coming up on 957, Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. God willing, if the creek don't rise, I get to do this all over again tomorrow morning between 8 and 10 o'clock in the morning. And I do hope that you can join us too as well. Rush Limbaugh will be along following the news at, uh, at 10 o'clock this morning from Fox. And then, of course, Sean Hannity following news at 1 o'clock. Glenn Beck following news at 4 o'clock. Dave Ramsey tonight from uh, 7 o'clock until 10 o'clock. Of course, you can hear Coast to Coast here as well. Overnight, Benita will be along tomorrow morning with, uh, with AM Idaho. I just, I just find it almost an obscenity that we have a government that is more beholden to a handful of special interests. You've got people in the Republican Party who are doing this because Wall Street's funding their campaigns every two or four or six years. And then you've got people, the Democrats, who are behind all of this because they're working in conjunction and in cahoots with the United Nations to destroy all borders. There was some whack job broad at the United Nations a few years ago who said it was her goal to ensure that people around the world only had two servings of meat per week because, you know, we could feed them all vegetables and, you know, and beans and then everyone would be much better off. And her goal as well is to eliminate alcohol production around the world because then we can turn that grain into bread. And I thought, good luck. But the way things are going, she may actually get her wish once they put that template down of their worldwide government. And you'd have to have the blue-helmeted thugs come in here to seize all of your firearms because it's not going to happen otherwise. But once that's done... Then they'll control every aspect of your life. George Orwell's 1984, a little late, but finally arrived.